Stop there. Did you know that there are two versions of the Deep Space Seeker 35? And on the face of it, they may look like exactly the same drone, but they're really not. And you need to know the difference because if you get the wrong one, there is a potential. It might just ruin your day. Let me explain. So the Deep Space Seeker 35 comes in two frame geometries. You've got squished X and you've got dead cat. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, it's the same thing, isn't it? And you'd be completely wrong. The different frame geometries change how these drones feel in the air. So let's start with the dead cut and let's explain a little bit about a dead cut. So the dead cut frame starts by moving the two motors out wider, creating an almost Y shape at the front, as you can see here. And why would you want this? Well, there's three reasons actually. Firstly, you get an unobstructed view of the props in the camera. The camera is moved a little bit further forward in comparison to where these arms are, which means that when your props are spinning here, they're never going to be up, they're never going to be in view of this camera no matter how wide of an angle that lens is at. Secondly, for cinematic flying, it gives you a better weight distribution. So from a cinematic point of view, if you're trying to fly this nice and smooth, and it makes a whole lot more sense with the way the weight is distributed to have a dead cat version like this. And thirdly, a dead cat version is probably better for newbies because it flies less twitchy. It's a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? Compliant you know exactly where it's going to go and how it's going to go and it sort of pulls you through almost um so those are the three reasons why you would want to have this configuration like that and i'm just trying to point it up towards the camera so you can sort of see and now for the squished x version you can see straight away that these are just straight out there and a bit more aggressive so the squished x version takes on the traditional X and brings all of the motors closer to the middle. Pilots who prefer the squished or the true X versions of frames are generally after one thing and that thing is agility. You've got a tighter center of gravity which makes your rotation and your rolls a lot snappier. Your center of gravity is a lot more in there and it just is so much more agile than a dead cat version of the same drone can be. This is a freestyle pilot's dream. You can whip through things a lot faster, a lot easier, and a lot more effectively when it comes to freestyle. But there is, of course, a trade-off. And that trade-off is occasionally you are going to view those props in view. Now, there's a few ways to mitigate it. You can use sort of grey or see-through props like these. Generally speaking with this, it's not the props are not always in view. There are sometimes when it's more in view than it isn't, but it's not completely out of view like it is on a dead cat. And if I just hold them both up to show you exactly where the differences lie, so you should then be able to see the differences in how those front arms are set and laid out. The other trade-off is if you're a newer pilot, you are gonna feel it be a little bit more twitchy than you would do with a dead cart which means it's going to be a little bit more difficult to tame in the early days of your FPV journey. Not impossible, but it's just something that you're going to need to bear in mind. Okay, so this video is going to be in two parts then. First of all, we're going to head over to the PC now and we're going to update this to Betafly 25.12, which brings a stable version of position and altitude hold. And we'll test that out in the field before that, we'll test that out in the field. And then after we've done that, what we'll do is we'll take it for a freestyle rip off myself and Boy Wonder FPV will have a freestyle rip of this and we'll see just how different it is compared to the dead cat version. I'm not gonna put the dead cat flights up as well because we've, we've got loads of dead cat flights from when we did the review way back when. 
but it'll be good to see our reaction to this once we put the deck cat down and take this up into the air. So first of all, let's move over to the PC and we'll get the update and upgrade of Betaflight done. Okay, so once you have connected your drone to Betaflight, what we're now going to do is we're going to upgrade to 2025.12. Reluctantly, I'll say it like that. So first of all, we're just going to disconnect from Betaflight and we're going to go to Update Firmware. If we hit Auto Detect, it'll find the board that we're using and it'll tell us what the latest stable release is if we have release selected here. So we're going with an official firmware now rather than what we've been doing previously and selecting the beta releases etc. Hit load firmware online and then hit flash firmware. It's going to ask you do you want to create a backup? Now I do want to create a backup in this particular instance and I'd always recommend that you guys create a backup as well. And then so we're going to watch for this change into DFU mode. There we go. So if we now hit load firmware online again and flash firmware, it now starts to flash. So if ever you get an issue where it won't connect when you're trying to flash, that's a, an easy way of fixing it. I'll leave a link to the Impulse RC driver fixer down below. Or the other option is you just press the boot button as you plug in the USB to the drone. But this drone is actually together with side panels on it and I'm lazy. So if there's another way of doing it, I'll always find another way. And that's uh, that's the way it is. So uh, yeah, well now we're just gonna wait for it to flash. And then we're gonna set up. In fact, I have made a grave error, unless of course it's included in, let's check together actually. So in the past, does this configure? No, I didn't. I've not downloaded the new configurator. That's fine. So we'll open up Chrome. Uh, well, let's just close off this driver fixer. And we'll go to this version. And so in the past, you haven't been able. Oh, sorry. No, let me try that again. So in the past, you've had to add GPS hold and altitude hold manually. So the question is, if we go into modes, is it now in here or are we going to have to flash again? No, we're going to have to flash again. So it still doesn't come as standard with it. So again, all we just do is hit detect and I'll find it. And over here, we just need to hit. OK, so now we're in DFU mode in here. We're not going to be able to auto detect it. So we know it's a Hackars F722V2. So it's that one. Now we need to add in our position and altitude hold. So if we just select them there like that, load firmware online, flash firmware, connect to bootloader. And we are flashing. Oh, we'll just give it a second. Um, we'll be back to you once the process is done. So now you're going to get loads of errors saying that this isn't set up and that's not set up. And that's why we saved our configuration. So if we go into presets and we're going to load back up, we're now looking for the most recent one, which will be, oh, there we go, Seeker 35XL. So just double click the right one. Okay, so everything is now working as it should. And now it's just a case of setting up our receiver tab, sorry, our modes tab. If we go into our modes tab now, and we're just gonna have to find position and altitude hold again. So if you leave it on auto and then press the switch that you wanna use. So I'm gonna want that in the middle. And then position hold, I'm gonna want at the bottom of the switch. And then what we can do, we can do position and altitude hold together if we had another link to them. Link, sorry, if we had another range to them. So all we've got to do is on another switch, if we throw that switch to the bottom, aux one alt hold and then add range, aux one. Okay, so we've got we can either have it so that they're both engaged at the same time, which will give us position and altitude hold, or we've got position hold and altitude hold set separately. Still so ultimately now, the only thing that we need to do is to go out there and fly it and find out, first of all, if the Seeker 35XL 
is better than the DC. And while we're there, we can also try out the new 2025 and see if all those bugs have been squished in this latest release. What I'll do is I'll upload this to my Discord so that you've got this. If you've got one of these seekers and you don't want to go through this whole process, you can just literally up upgrade it and then apply this CLI and all these switches will be set up and everything for you. You just need to make sure that they're on the right ones for your controller. But that's it. So let's head out to the field and we'll test and find out what, uh, what the script is, what the score is and what we think and feel of it. Let's freaking go. Okay, so Deep Space Seeker 35 XL, and we're going to try Beta Flight 4.0 no, 2025.12. And we're going to try position and altitude hold. We'll try that one first. We put them both onto the same switch. So there is position and altitude hold. It's holding. Altitude? And position it's not too bad actually yeah. it is drifting backwards very slightly but overall i don't think that's too bad we'll try again so it's return to home as well i've not got a return to home set up on the switch oh, okay. so obviously it's going to uh drift a little bit drift a little bit yeah let's just try that again i think i was a little bit too low to the ground there bird 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 Third and bird. Third and bird. Bird chasing you. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's no, it's actually chasing you. Oh my dude, it's coming up towards you. Like, Where actually. is it? Where is it? Behind you, like actually. Oh okay, you're going now it's flying away. Okay. Oh my god, it was literally chasing you for like a solid ten seconds. And then it started flying away. Oof. So the I'm just right straight in front of us. Oh yeah, yeah. And we'll just we'll stop and we'll try the position altitude hold together. It, it's still not perfect, is it? It's still not. Uh, we can show you that's position hold that's altitude hold and then that's position hold so neither of them are perfect in their implementation still even with the final build um, <clears throat> obviously if you've got a bit more of a, a posh gps with a few more settings and a few more uh, sensors on it you might have better luck but certainly something that's uh, relatively basic like this is still struggling a little bit with it. And we'll just do it again. But we, we just lose so much altitude there, look. You literally just go down. Yeah, I had, to, I had to grab hold of it then because we was going to hit the ground. So it's something. It does seem better than in the alpha builds, that's for sure. But... Uh, it unfortunately it still isn't perfect sadly i'm gonna do my thing it's a trip uh, i'm gonna oh should i do the uh inverted jaw the inverted jaw spin for you you ready uh, oh my god you're going up fast ready no. Beautiful. Perfect, bro. Perfect. Lovely. Right.
here is the bottom line for anybody who doesn't know and there are at this time of the year a lot of new pilots joining the hobby so i'm putting out some of these videos to try and help people make better decisions try and quell a little bit of hysteria with the dji video yesterday that is going to be the first in a series we're going to have a few more of those just to really try and help people understand what's going on and just to try and quell a little bit of panic but also to sound the klaxon that it's not quite over just yet so the bottom line between the seeker 35 dead cart and the seeker 35 squished x is really simple you've got exactly the same motors you've got the same flight controller you've got the same power system you've got the same DJI 04 Pro. If you want cinematic, clear flying, then you're going to want the dead cat version. If you want aggressive freestyle with maximum maneuverability, then the Squished X is going to be the version for you. Choose it based on how you actually want to fly and you'll have the time of your life. I'll leave a link in the description down below. It is an affiliate link. Uh, it doesn't cost you any extra, but it will help the channel if you decide to make a purchase of either the dead cat or the squished X version. It really is that simple. If you're a new bit and you want to learn to fly but not go too mental and you want to start your journey with cinematic flying, go for the dead cat. There'll be a link down below. If you want to go mental, then get the uh, the squished X because it really is mental and, and amazing. I hope you're all having an amazing Christmas. If you've got any questions whatsoever, please do just drop them in the comments down below. But until next time, peace out youtube and i have had a chat and we believe that this is the video that you'll like the most so watch it and let me know if they're right